The main reason I realized iPadOS needs to be the primary focus of Quadruple UDC is because every other platform I just have minor nitpicks. iOS 14 I honestly think is pretty good, okay? After like a year of using it, I don't have a ton of complaints. I've done my iOS 15 wishlist before. You guys know I basically just don't want the low battery pop-ups to be pop-ups. I think they should be notifications and maybe make widgets interactive, but for the most part I'm pretty happy with how my iPhone software works and I have more issues with the hardware than I do the software but with the iPad it's completely the opposite kind of similar thing with Mac OS and that's also a very exciting part of quadruple UDC is M1X hardware that of course is high on my list but this is supposed to be a software you know developer keynote and I think Apple has the biggest amount of answers when it comes to why iPad OS is the limiting factor for so many use cases the iPad Pro could be useful for so that's why we're we're talking about it today. Let's begin. Yeah, similar things with watchOS and tvOS. I'm just like, yeah, little minor tweaks here and there. macOS, I'm like, yeah, this one little notification setting should be improved, but I feel like macOS Big Sur kind of gave us that huge redesign last year, so this year is more about just kind of ironing things out, squashing bugs, mainstreaming a few more features to make them more simple and intuitive. I'm not saying everything else is boring and we have to ignore every other platform because this is dub dub. This is where Apple prioritizes, you know, all of the software software, which is good, but iPadOS, I just have these huge, like, fundamental things that they need to change, mainly because of how overkill the hardware is for the software, and I know I'm by no means the first person to bring that up. Everybody online, I think, universally agrees. Giving an iPad Pro something that is basically really good at social media, email, and when it comes to productivity-based stuff, like photo editing, but once you start getting into the high-resolution video editing, or wanting to do more audio mixing or a lot of people out there want to do coding that's where a time and time again ipad os falls short ipad os is the obstacle especially now knowing that an m1 chip is powering so many different macs in the lineup that are selling incredibly well and people seem to be very very happy with the performance of the m1 now they're giving that extreme performance to an ipad which don't get me wrong a12x and a12z chip were kind of already overkill for the market the ipad was serving but now they're even giving the th Thunderbolt port to the iPad so that every single iPad Pro now ships with this really high speed, high bandwidth I.O. that literally is so hard to take advantage of because iPad OS doesn't even support the ProRes video codec, it doesn't support external cameras that you could connect to, and of course high on my list is Pro Applications. There needs to be a better catalog of apps that can truly take advantage of the M1, but the reason that's not super high on my list is because after editing that video a couple days ago completely off the iPad Pro. LumaFusion did great, and there's minor tweaks here and there that I think could make LumaFusion very close to a Final Cut replacement, but overall, I do think that the Pro applications are there, but the overall limiting factor to the iPad is always going to come down to iPadOS kind of being built off of the backbone of iOS, and that means it can't really be that complicated or that intricate, and maybe there does need to be some type of fundamental rewrite we get this year. Just trying to live stream with my iPad Pro yesterday was was such a giant nightmare mess because, well, the iPad does support external microphones, which I'm glad that feature is there. There doesn't really seem to be many options or settings to tinkering microphone settings because I plug in my traditional microphone that I used to live stream on my Mac and now it's extremely loud and the audio is peaking and there's too much white noise and there's no real way to fix that, even though I'm using the exact same accessories that I would use with my Mac because there's not really much sound preferences and you can't really control where audio is outputting to at the same time, iPad is just going to send out audio to wherever it feels like sending out audio to. So not being able to write applications and take advantage of the M1 in that regard, or not being able to take advantage of the 16 gigs of RAM that some of these iPad Pros are actually shipping with. And it's crazy to me that Apple actually demonstrates the new M1 iPad Pro in the Thunderbolt port as being great because now you can tap it into your $6,000 Pro Display XDR. Apple, the Pro Display 
display is still crazy expensive, but I like the idea of someone using, you know, their $1,000 iPad with their $6,000 monitor, but you gotta bring the software along with it, okay? We need revamped external monitor support so that when you dock your iPad to an extra screen, it's not just mirroring it, it's actually expanding the user experience. And right now, that's basically all being carried by third parties, which have to optimize their app differently for when an external monitor is plugged in. But I don't think that should just all fall on the third parties. I think iPadOS itself should be able to scale and who knows, maybe come up with some kind of resizable window approach if you're able to run on a big screen like that. And now we've got eight and 16 gigs of RAM. This should enable the iPad to do so much more than what it's currently doing. M1 chip is a monumental leap after the A12Z, but because of the limitations of iPadOS, there's just so little that can actually be done. And because I was trying so hard to kind of incorporate the iPad into my day-to-day -day workflow and make it my sole editing rig, but I kept running into, oh, iPadOS doesn't do this. Oh, iPadOS doesn't do this. Oh, iPadOS can't do that. It makes me want to grab Hair Force One by the sexy collar and pull him close and say, Craig, you need to fix this. After trying to move a lot of my workflow onto the M1 iPad Pro, it genuinely started to make me want Mac OS to just be an optional dual boot method. And I think way too many people misunderstand me whenever I suggest that, because I don't think it's a terrible idea, especially when the laundry list of features that we keep coming up with, because it's not always just one big thing that iPadOS needs. It's not like, okay, if it got Final Cut, suddenly all of our issues would be gone. It's not just, oh, okay, it got external monitor support. Now all of our issues are solved. No, it's like probably hundreds of little features, hundreds of tiny little things that people are like, oh, I can't use my Safari extensions or my Chrome extensions on the iPad. Oh, I want to be able to use terminal commands for this specific feature and I can't do that now. Or, oh, the Files app is not really good at transferring this type of file and because there's no floating window support that makes the click and drag functionality kind of basic. All of these items could suddenly go away if Apple just caved and let people have a backdoor option. I'm not talking about by default making the iPad Pro boot up to Mac OS and not have iPad OS on it. That's not what I'm suggesting. I'm simply saying it would save a lot of time and it would probably require very little tinkering to get Mac OS to run on the iPad knowing that Mac OS supports a 4x3 aspect ratio, Mac OS supports the M1 chip as we know across multiple different devices. It can run off of that. The Mac charges via USB-C. So even if Apple made it like a super high requirement and said that, okay, in order for you to dual boot Mac OS on your iPad, you have to get the one terabyte storage configuration or higher, and you have to make sure you have the magic keyboard case. And only then when you have these two things, can you actually dual boot it into Mac OS. Even that I would be fine with. And I don't think that bringing Mac OS to the iPad would actually cannibalize sales of the MacBook because you can upsell people way more on the iPad than you can a MacBook. iPad Pro is not going to be a MacBook killer if it starts at $1,100 with 128 gigs of storage and then you got to spend another $350 on a keyboard case and then Apple's also going to try to sell you on the $130 Apple Pencil. Whereas with the MacBook, you can only really upsell people on like an adapter. It's like, okay, $1,000 MacBook Air. There's everything. Keyboard, trackpad, touch ID, great display. Oh, and uh, here's a $70 dongle. That's all the upselling you can do. iPad Pro can upsell people way more, especially if you require them to get the 16 gigs of RAM option or the one terabyte configuration, because that's going to cost people $1,800 before the keyboard and trackpad connection. So if someone is split, and I do believe that's the most common situation, the average consumer is like, do I get a MacBook or do I get an iPad with a keyboard case? Apple probably can get that consumer to spend way more money if they opt to get a high-end iPad. And yes, it ships with iPad OS by default, but having an option in settings to let people switch it over to Mac OS if they have one of those pro class workflows that are like, I need Mac OS for this one specific thing, or I need Mac OS for this one specific thing. So going into settings and say, hey, let this really expensive, really high-end iPad actually dual boot into Mac OS mode. That way, you know, like the $300 iPad couldn't switch to Mac OS or the iPad Air even could not boot into Mac OS. It would be exclusive as a high-end feature for only really expensive iPad Pros, I think they would get a ton of people to spend more money than they really need because iPad Pro has so much fun hardware that people appreciate. And until the iPad has the type of software built into iPad OS that can take advantage of the M1 chip and the Thunderbolt port and actually become a productivity-based machine that can do all the things a Mac can do, then a lot of people are just gonna settle for a cheaper MacBook. They'll be fine buying either the 13-inch MacBook Pro or the 
$1,000 MacBook Air, which is overall less money than someone who, if they find out, hey, if you spend, you know, $2,000 on this really fancy iPad setup, you're gonna have a touchscreen, you're gonna have stylus support, you're gonna have 120 hertz, you're gonna have mini LED, you're gonna have face ID and rear-facing cameras and a cellular option. And on top of that, all of the great things you love having a Mac for, you can also dual boot into Mac OS mode and use it for all of your traditional Mac stuff. And I think that would become a really popular option and people would be willing to pay the premium to make sure they could get a device that has all of the great hardware and the great software. And I think that's why I think iPadOS needs the primary focus. At the end of the day, I don't believe Apple is going to let us boot Mac OS on the iPad. For all of you already commenting, iPad is an iPad, so it can't run Mac OS. Even though all of you same people were using that argument as to why the iPad can't have a trackpad or the iPad can't get the M1 chip, and yet it has both of those things now, it's just frustrating to me knowing how much more the iPad Pro could be capable of. Can you imagine the capabilities of such a device that was running two fairly powerful operating systems, depending on which one you wanted, and you had all of the great overkill hardware and the great software baked into a single product? And yeah, it's probably going to be well over $2,000, but for the money, there's not going to be anything else on the market with that type of capability. So that's why I hope iPadOS gets the most amount of love and gets the most amount of Mac features brought to the iPad as possible because it really truly needs a fundamental rewrite. It needs something big and I don't really feel like that with the rest of Apple's operating systems. iOS 15, minor tweaks, probably slightly different shading on the Safari icon. Yeah, there will be minor bug fixes and improvements here and there. Same thing with watchOS, tvOS, even macOS Big Sur. I'm just like, yeah, you're mostly fine. Just little tweaks here and there. But iPadOS, please Apple, fix this. Make the M1 powerful enough to take advantage of all of the great hardware inside the iPad and do not disappoint us once again. They probably will. This is your Apple Sheep here. I'll see you guys in the next one.